Hi class, good afternoon. Can you hear me very clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. So, uh, how's your week? How's your week and how's the, the examinations ongoing? Do you still have your other exams uh, this week or next week? Probably next week. Do you still have exams? Next week, po. Yes, sir. Midterm na po. Midterm na bilis, no? <laughs> All right, so maybe hindi ko sasabayan sila. But uh, I would like to ask, how's your prelim exam in our, our operations audit? Um, do you find it very easy, average, or difficult? Difficult. <laughs> difficult po. <laughs> difficult, right. Okay. So, very difficult, sir. Very difficult. So it's... Parang time consuming ganon. So, well, anyway, that's that's okay. That's um, since first time lang naman natin yung ano yung operations audit, de ba? And masasana din kayo jan in the future in case na may auditing theory na kayo and then auditing problem. So, uh, ganon din yung setup ng no, mga exams. So, but it depends on the uh, professor kung ganon sila magpa-exam. Uh, feeling ko sanay naman na kayo dyan kay Lamang VM, di ba? Ganun din magpa-exam sila mga VM essay. Uh, yung enumeration, identification, so ganun sa kanila. But uh, I hope uh, lahat kayo nakapasa ng prelim, ng prelim exam kasi uh, hindi ko pa actually na-check. I-check ko siya pa isa-isa kasi but remember, uh, the one who has uh, the best um, prelim uh, will have a prize coming from me. So, so check it talaga siya pa isa isa isa. And then now, uh, may questions po ba kayo from chapters one to five? Do you have any questions? If you have questions you can ask me through our group chat or you can send me a message um, privately uh, kung may hindi kayo na from chapter 1 to chapter 5. May naguguluhan kayong part, so okay lang naman. So I can coach you one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I can be your mentor uh, regarding that. So para mas maintindihan. So mas okay kasi kapag na tapos natin yung buong subject tapos naintindihan natin ang maayos kasi ito ay ma-apply rin natin sa susunod nyo pang subjects. So, if you have any questions, you can uh, raise it today or you can send it through our chat box. If you have any questions? Sir, ako po, sir. Yeah, may request sige. po, sir. May ina po kasi gumawa ng mga essay-essay. So, may, pwede pong makikin example ng sagot dun po sa tanong nyo sa prelims namin. Kahit isa lang po dun sa apat. Uh, all right. So, uh, actu actually, hindi ko na remember yung mga questions doon. But yung, yung way kung paano mo siya sagutin, kasi it's an essay uh, plus a situational case. And then you have to apply uh, yung napag-aralan nyo from uh, chapters 1 to chapter 5. First is to attack the question. So, uh, Ano ba yung nature no problem? For example, yung may isang problem doon is about doon sa financial reporting. You have to attack ano ba yung cost no uh, problem? Bakit ba may, uh, bakit may ganun? Okay, let me try to, let me try to open uh, your exa uh, prelim exam. Check ko lang ah. So, para mas malinaw. Okay, loading. Loading. Alright. Christian, okay. Okay. Alright, let me just check. 
And then, lahat ba nung questions doon mahirap? Or okay lang naman? Ano po sir, madali po pero mahirap pong i- parang Explain. paano yung approach nung explanation? Yes po. Oh, okay. Well, sa totoo lang, tama lang na ganun yung... Tama lang na mahirapan kayo kasi in real corporate world, uh, you have to resolve problems by your own. You have to resolve cases by your own. Hindi ka makakapagtanong kung kanino. Unless na lang may willing tumulong sa inyo. So, ganun siya. Hanapin ko lang yun natin na yung exam ito. Operations, audit, and examinations preliminary. Key opening. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. This one. Yeah. So let's. Uh, I will read the first case. So, Operational Audit Case 1. Anthony Williams, Deputy Director of Finance for the Metropolitan Police, was exposed as a fraudster. He stole five million pounds over a period of eight years between 1986 and 1994 from a secret bank account. So, this is a true-to-life uh, story. This is true to life case na nangyari talaga between um, 1980s to 1990s. Set up as part of a highly sensitive operation against terrorists. So lumalabas daw si Anthony Williams pala is Deputy, Deputy Director of Finance no Metropolitan Police. Anthony Williams was asked in the mid-1980s to set up a secret bank account. His signature was the only one required to authorize payments from the account. So, uh, may co-signatory siya. So, binabasa lang natin muna yung problem. May co-signatory siya, pero okay lang daw na ang pumirma for bank transaction sa pag-withdraw ng cash, isa lang. So, kasama siya doon. So, kahit pirma lang niya, pwede makapag-withdraw sa bank account. So, this enabled him to steal from the account to purchase homes in Spain, the South England, and Scotland, where he bought himself the title Laird of Tomintol and spent large amounts of money and property renovations. The internal controls in place were inadequate to manage the possible risk and external auditors failed. Okay. So, first, kung nabasan na natin yung case, ang una natin i-attack is the problem. What's the problem? So, yun yung dapat natin identify Bakit nagkaroon ng ganito problem? So, uh, ano ba yung naging problem doon? Bakit na-commit, na nakakommit si Anthony Williams noong? Bakit nakakommit si Anthony Williams noong uh, um, crime na uh, pagkuha ng pera? Based dun sa ano, sa operational audit case 1. Ano yung pagkakaintindi nyo? Ano yung naging problem doon? Do you have any idea? So we have to attack first the problem. Ano yung sakit, nakikita nyo sa tingin nyo na uh, hindi okay? Sir, Bakit? siguro... Yes. Ay, po. Siguro po, nag, parang nagkulang po yung management po ng authorization sa transaction. Yes, tama parang, po yun. That's... Yun. Ayun. Sige, parang parang nagkulang, ahead. parang nagkulang po ng separation ng jobs yung management. Kaya, na, kaya nakakapag-commit si Anthony Williams nung yung crime po. Yes, that's true. That's correct. Yun yung dapat nating i-attack. Ano yung dapat nating identify na problem? Kasi bakit nga daw ba nakakuha uh, ng pera si Anthony Williams? Una, kasi merong uh, lack ng internal control. May internal control nga, may signatory, pero isa lang. Sino yung signatory? Siya lang. 
may isa pang signatory pero kailangan ba necessary ba, daw ba na ano kailangan may pirma rin nung isa pang signatory ang sabi hindi daw o, so ibig sabihin bawat pirma lang ni Anthony Williams baka kakuha na siya ng pera so doon pa lang malalaman na natin kung ano yung problem so inatak mo na yung uh, yung case yung problem may problema doon kulang ng control, kulang ng authorization levels. Nakukuha po ba? So, na-analyze na natin yung problem. Now, we have to check the possible loophole in the internal control. Ano yung possible loophole sa internal control? Na nalaman na natin yung problem, di ba? Na isa lang yung signatory. Ngayon, ano yung loophole naman sa internal control? Tulad ng sinabi kanina, may uh, lack ng segregation of duties, di ba? Sinong pinag-open ng bank account? Si Anthony Williams. Sino rin pwedeng mag-withdraw? Si Anthony Williams, di ba? Hindi pa pwedeng ikaw yung uh, uh, ikaw yung uh, mag-implement, mag-withdraw ng cash at the same time ikaw din yung signatory na mag-withdraw no? Cash iba dapat yung uh, magre-request for withdrawal, iba dapat yung pipirma para makuha yung pera. So, para merong control. Marami pa dyang, ano, in, marami pa dyang loophole sa internal control na yan. And then, uh, another thing, syempre, alam nyo na true to life story to, you can conduct a research of your own. So, you can try to look on the internet, ano ba talaga yung totoong nangyari, ano yung mas di, uh, deeper uh, Uh, involvement, ano yung mga, ano talaga yung ano, uh, reason behind, bakit ganon, bakit nagawa ito. So, you have to look, you have to, uh, you have to look on the uh, weakness of the internal control. I-check natin, ano ba yung transaction? As if kayo yung auditor, syempre hindi lang kayo titingin dito sa sinulat ng problem. Titingin pa kayo, magkakanda kayo ng research. Ganun yung auditor, di ba? Hindi ka lang mag stay sa information na pre-provide sa iyo, magre-research ka pa. So, magkanda ka ng research, o pwede naman sa, ano, sa cellphone lang, pwede naman, if you have laptop, if you have computer, you can conduct a research. Magkano lang naman ba yung uh, 1 hour, 15 pesos to 20 pesos na internet research. And then, so, alam nyo na yung problem, nakuha nyo na yung sa internal control. Then, you have to identify what are those risk diba ano daw ba yung risk involved doon diba so nakita niyo nakapag-withdraw siya ng uh, ng cash diba nakapag-withdraw siya ng cash kasi siya lang yung signatory na pwedeng uh, mag-withdraw ng cash diba so ano yung mga risk about doon so meron tayong ano resource risk diba any other kinds of uh, business risks diba meron so You have to identify those risks and uh, nandun naman yun doon sa libro natin. So, and then you have to explain bakit yun yung risk na, na ano nyo, na assess nyo. Bakit yun yung involved for that uh, particular case. Nakukuha po ba? Now, alam nyo na yung problem. Alam nyo na yung loophole, weakness sa internal control. Na-assess nyo na rin yung risk. Kayo, bilang isang internal auditor, ano yung iniisip nyo na magandang Uh, internal control, improvement, di ba? As if parang kayo yung nagpa-plano, pinaplano nyo siya na, okay, so kung, kung dalawa sana yung signatory na required para doon sa pag-withdraw ng check, eh, ng pera sa bank, hindi sana mangyayari sa ganito. So, ganun yung iisipin nyo. Parang kayo yung internal auditor. Ngayon pa lang, isipin nyo na kayo na yung internal auditor para at least uh, na-imagine nyo kung ano yung nasa transaction. Nakukuha po ba? And then, syempre, every time na may uh, withdrawal, kailangan may request muna. Bak, ano yung purpose nung, ano, nung fund withdrawal? Kailangan merong taga-record. Iba yung magre-record. Kasi sa atin, di ba, sa accounting, iba yung magre-record. Iba yung accountant. Iba din yung uh, magdi-disburse nung funds, yung finance. So, iba yung accounting, iba din yung finance. ba diba? Although fit tayo pareho, ah, fit tayo yung mga accountants, 
pwede sa accounting, pwede sa finance. Pero dapat mayroong segregation of duties. So, nagigets po ba yung ganun? Nagigets po ba, class? So, parang ganun yung pag-attack dapat sa problem. Yes, po, sir. Opa, sir. Hindi, hindi nyo lang siya kailangan i-explain, hindi nyo na mababaw lang. So, kailangan uh, i-dig, parang ang tawag dito, i-dissect yung problem. As if para kayo talaga yung auditor. So, ganun lang po yun. So, next, syempre, probably sa midterm, ganyan pa rin yung ano, ganyan pa rin yung uh, series nung, uh, yung setup nung exam nyo. Pero, syempre, ang coverage nyo na from chapter 1 hanggang sa last chapter na mapag-aaralan natin. So, yung ito pa lang, yung prelim nyo, ang application pa lang is from chapter 1 to chapter 5. So, sa midterm naman, kung hanggang saan tayo matapos, eh di, yun naman yung i-apply natin. Nakukuha po ba? So, syempre ngayon, pag-aaralan natin yung ano, flow charting. So, mag-flow chart na rin kayo. So, ma malay nyo ba? Baka isama yung flow chart. Mag-create, kumawa daw kayo ng flow chart or mind map. So, ganito lang yun. So, para lang kayong auditor na kapag iniisip niyo yung problem. So, any questions? Any other questions? Nakapasok na po ba si, ano, si Dipa Supil? Ako po, sir. Hindi na po. Alright. Okay. So, silence means uh, no other questions. Maybe we can continue now on chapter 6 to chapter 7. So, let's try to discuss chapter 6 to chapter 7. Well, chapter 6 and chapter 7, now, connected sila sa bawat isa. So, uh, it's more about uh, audit tools. So, ang audit tools, ito yung ginagamit natin para mas mapadali yung buhay ng auditor. Siyempre, ito yung, uh, ano ba yung Tagalog ng tools? Kagamitan, di ba? Ito yung mga kagamitan na maaaring gamitin ng mga auditor para uh, mas okay yung pagkandak nila ng audit. Pero, siyempre, gawa muna tayo ng story. Iba kasi yung auditing tools na ginagamit noon, nung mga uh, oldies na auditors, kaysa sa mga newbies, uh, youngsters na auditors ngayon. So, tayo bilang mga bata pa, di ba? Mga bata pa naman tayo. So, Iba yung ginagamit natin na auditing tools and techniques ngayon dahil syempre meron ng technology, uh, I'm, yung advantage ng technology. So the audit tools. Audit tools were developed by experts in the field of statistics, econo economics, mathematics, quality control, management, and finance to check the quality of the business. So, ibig sabihin daw, ang audit tools daw pala, hindi lang ang gumawa ay auditor. Meron ding uh, intervention ng ibang experts like mga statisticians. Siyempre, humingi rin tayo ng tulong sa statisticians kasi kailangan din natin ng statistical analysis for audit. Diba? Nagsasampling tayo. Nagkakandak tayo ng audit sampling. And sampling is a technique used by statisticians. And uh, eventually, we are using it as well as part of our audit tools. Econo economics. So, yung mga economists, uh, tumulong din sila sa pag-create no auditing tools natin. Uh, ano ba yung mga ginagamit natin na, ano, na computations na uh, mga economists yung nag-formulate? Uh, I'm not sure kung uh, napag-aralan nyo na to, pe, but we do have uh, economic order quantity. So, napag-aralan nyo na po ba yung economic order quantity? Uh, can you still hear me? Yes. Hello? 
Yes, okay. So, uh, yung economic order quantity, uh, ginagamit natin to sa inventory. Um, kapag uh, okay pa ba yung level ng inventory or kulang na, hindi tayo nag niyan, kundi yung mga economists. Mathematics. So, yung mga mathematicians, syempre, kung... Uh, Yung tulong din nila sa pag-formulate ng audit tools, magagaling kasi yung mga mathematicians. Actually, under my uh, team sa uh, department ko sa finance, uh, 32 lahat kasi nung mga under ko. May isa ako doon hinire. Hindi siya accountant, hindi siya CPA. Mat uh, mathematician siya. So, mathematics graduate. Sobrang galing. Um, Sa so, sobrang galinga niya, kaya niyang tapusin yung pinagawa ko sa kanya within one to two hours. Yung pambuong araw na pwede mong gawin bilang isang ordinaryong tao, parang one to two hours lang niya ginagawa. And then, uh, after nun, natutulog na siya. So, imagine ninyo, natutulog siya. Uh, ilang hours yung pasok, eight hours, six hours, natutulog lang siya. And then, Diba? Sana o. <laughs> pero, pero syempre, um, okay naman, ba Okay naman siya. Wala akong problema sa kanya. Natapos niya yung pinagawa ko, ba Pag may pinagawa ko ulit, natatapos niya ulit. Marami pa siyang uh, enough time. Pero na, natutulog lang siya. And then, syempre, hindi naman siya, ethically wise, hindi naman siya pwede dahil imagine mo yung ibang employees na work Tapos siya natutulog. Although, productivity-wise, okay siya. Gusto ko siya. ba? So, okay yun. Although, syempre, maraming, maka, maraming siyang maririnig na natutulog lang siya. Ganito, ganyan. So, doon, nag-come up kami ng policy na bawal matulog sa office. Kaya, ayan, at least, na-prevent na lang yung pagtulog niya. Pero, magaling talaga siya. So, yung mga mathematicians, uh, nakakatulong din sila for the creation of auditing tools and techniques. And then, the quality control team, management, syempre management, and then the finance team, which uh, kung saan tayo nabibilang, finance and accounting. So, to check the quality of the business. As an internal auditor, we are interested in how programs and processes are designed. So, uh, bilang auditor, Saan daw tayo naka-focus? Can you still hear me, class? Can you still hear me, class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So, bilang... Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. So, bilang auditor, saan tayo naka-focus? When we are using auditing tools, we focus on the programs and processes designed kung effective ba talaga. Diba? Kung effective ba talaga yung processes na yun, di ba? Is it effective? If yes, okay tayo, di ba? Kung hindi siya effective, maybe kailangan nating i-improve yung uh, processes na yun. Tayo bilang isang internal auditor. So, yung audit tools, compare natin siya yung sa traditional audit tools noon sa automated audit tools ngayon, di ba? So, imagine ninyo yung hirap ng mga accountants sa auditors noon. Uh, pag nag-record sila ng transaction noon, ang kapal nung libro. Di ba? May libro kayo ni Sir Valix. Yung libro nila, yung columnar nila noon, mas makapal pa sa libro ni Sir Valix. Na-imagine nyo po ba yun? Sir. Diba you have your uh, columnar? Nakakita na kayo ng columnar? Nakakita na kayo ng columnar kasi syempre accounting students kayo. Dapat nakikita nyo yon. 
Yung libro ni Sir Valix, kung gaano kakapal yun, kihigitan pa nung mga uh, ledger sa ka-journal ng mga accountants sa ka-auditors noon. Diba? Ginagawa yun ng accountants and then i-audit ng mga auditors. Eh, wala pa masyadong computer noon. Hindi sila gumagamit ng laptop. Uh, pag nag-audit sila, as in sinusulat talaga ng auditor. Nagko-compute sila ng calculator nila, tinitikmarka nila ng ballpen nila. Ganun sila gumawa yung mga auditor. So, they use worksheets talaga. And then, pangalawa, they conduct walk through. Uh, do you have any idea what is walkthrough? Do you have any idea what is walkthrough? Observations po, sir. No idea. Yes, para yung observation. So, pag sinabing walkthrough, para kang nag-field trip. Di ba nag-field trip tayo dati sa, ano, sa mga factory? Naalala niyo pa po ba yun ng mga kabataan natin? Field trip tayo sa factory ng, ano, ng Lucky Me, ng Gardenia, ng Yakult. Na... Tama po ba ako? Ma-attend po kayo yes, noon? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. yes sir. So, for example, saan kayo, sa kayo nag-field trip noon? Pwede ko po ba malaman? Huwag yun na sabihin yung Manila Zoo. Sa Lucky Me, sir. Sa Lucky Me, sir. Sa Lucky Me, sir. Para magawin mag natin example. Lucky Lucky Me. A factory ng Crayola. Okay. So, uh, uh, factory ng Crayola. Factory ng Gardenia. Okay, so, let's try muna doon sa factory ng Crayola. Pag, um, factory ng Crayola sa kanong lapis, di ba, ng Mongol pencil. So, yung, sa so factory ng Crayola and then Mongol pencil, kung kayo yung auditor, para kayo mag-field trip ulit noon. Kasi you have to check Ano ba yung nangyayari sa process within the operations? So, ganun yun. So, you're trying to get information uh, through walking around the process doon sa operations. So, saan ba nagsisimula yung Crayola? Saan nang gagaling itong mga Crayola? Ah, inaano muna nila yan. A wax muna yan. Tinutunaw, clear, and then hahaluan lang ng color. And then, ilalagay doon sa, sa cryo molder. So, yung, kaya sinabing cryo molder, pampalamig. Di ba? Nilalamigan siya. So, imamold siya doon para maging itsurang crayons. Para maging itsurang crayons. So, ganun. And then, syempre, after noon, ano pa yung ibang process? So, ganun yung uh, iche-check natin bilang auditor. And then, after... Uh, maging finished products na siya, sana mapupunta. May, may mag-check pa bang uh, quality control team? Baka may bali yung Crayola. Baka may uh, mayroon dyan naka-label as pink, pero kulay brown pala, di ba? So, just to check the quality control. And then, saan i-stock? Anong warehouse? Baka naman yung warehouse mainit. Pwede pag naibenta na, tunaw na yung Crayola. So, kayo bilang auditor, iti-check nyo yun. Lahat ng possible, iti-check nyo. Mabusisi ang auditor. Kahit uh, yung smallest na concern, pwede nyo erase. Sabihin nyo, bakit nyo dyan yun nilagay sa initan? Eh, Crayola yan. Matutunaw yan. May bibenta pa ba yan? Dapat sana kikita pa tayo. Eh, kaso natunaw na, hindi na may bibenta. So, ganun kayo bilang auditor. Oh, and then another, sa Gardenia, syempre, iti-check nyo uh, kung kayo yung auditor sa Gardenia, syempre, mag-walk through test ulit kayo doon, titignan nyo kung ano ba yung, saan ang galing yung mga tinapa, yung materials ng tinapa, eh, di ba? Flour, milk, eggs, so, paano siya hahaluin? So, ilan yung lead time para maging tinapay na siya, process time para maging tinapay, di ba? And then, kapag binalot na, uh, was it properly sealed? 
baka yung nailagay doon sa ano sa loob ng pat nung tinapay may kagat na nung factory worker so may magche-check ba na quality control team so ganoon yung gagawin niyo bilang isang auditor so para lang kayo nagfi-field trip so di ba ganoon naman ginagawa niyo or Kaya lang kayo nag-field trip kasi gusto niyo lang makabili nung tinapay o kaya gusto niyo makabili ng crayons kasi mas mura pag factory price. The, the grade, sir. Um, ano po? Sorry. Kahil po sa dagdag grade. Ah, pampadagdag sa grade kasi isasama daw sa exam, di ba? Tinatakot ng teacher. So, ganon ganon yung... para tayong nag-field trip kapag tayo ay auditor. So, yung ginagawa nila doon, ang tawag doon, walk-through test. Although now, gumagamit pa rin tayo ng walk-through test, gumagamit tayo ng worksheet, kasi sa worksheet kasi Excel na tayo ngayon. And then, questionnaire. So, they give questionnaires. Uh, dati, gumagamit sila ng pamphlet. Wala naman kasi masyadong uh, Excel pa noon, walang computer pa noon. Pero nagbibigay sila ng questionnaire, nakaprint, print out form. Bakit nila kailangan ng questionnaires? Bet sila namimigay ng questionnaires. Para ma-identify ano yung mga possible problems within the processes, di ba? E tayo ngayon, pag magbigay tayo ng questionnaires, hindi na tayo pumupunta sa opisina, isesend na lang through email, gagawa na lang tayo ng Google Forms or Microsoft Forms. tapos isend na lang sa kanila through email or magpo-post lang tayo ng poll questions then tapos na na, di ba? Within less than 10 minutes tapos na yung poll, tapos na yung questionnaires, di ba? And then ginagamit pa nila is sampling. So nagsa-sampling din sila, audit sampling. Uh, do you have any idea what is audit sampling? Narinig na po ba yung sampling? May statistics po ba kayo? Yes, po, sir. Yes, okay. So, sa sampling, parang pag sinabing sampling, you are getting a samples that will represent the whole population. So, imagine ninyo ito yung uh, i-audit nyo. Nakikita nyo po ba yung bilog na dirinowin ko? Yes, sir. All right. So, it, so itong bilog na drinawing ko, it represents the whole population or the whole um, the totality of the I mean, the transactions that you need to audited, diba? uh, to be audited. So, imagine mo, lahat ng transaction na yan, sabihin natin, 1 million transactions. Kaya mo ba i-audit lahat ng 1 million transactions? Kaya mo po bang i-audit yung 1 million transactions? No. No. So, kaya ang gagawin natin, instead of Uh, instead of uh, auditing the 1 million transaction, we will just get a portion of the 1 million. So, kukuha tayo ng maliit dyan. Sabihin natin, uh, 50, uh, 5,000 transactions lang. So, that 5,000 transaction uh, represents the whole population. So, ang tawag doon, sample. Diba? So, sample yun. So, kaya doon natin nakuha yung sampling techniques. So, yung 5,000 transaction na yun, lahat na makita mo doon, nire-represent daw niya yung 1 million. Kaya meron pa rin tinatawag na error. So, error. Kasi, hindi ibig sabihin na yung 5,000, nire-represent niya talaga ng totoo yung 1 million. Pero, dahil may, uh, may limitation tayo bilang tao, hindi naman natin kaya i-audit yung 1 million transactions, so focus lang tayo sa mas maliit na number na sample. So, yun yung sampling. And then, isa pa sa, paper, sa traditional auditing tools, uh, paper-evaluated lahat ng 
uh, audits nila kasi nakuha nila sa papel, inaudit nila gamit ang papel, evaluate nila gamit ulit yung paper. So, paper evaluated lahat ng audit nila. Unlike sa automated, we are using now computer-assisted auditing tools and techniques. So, yun yung ginagamit natin ngayon. Lahat ng, may, lahat ng auditors ngayon, gumagamit na ng computer, laptop. So, bibihira ang auditor na hindi gumagamit ng laptop kasi kailangan, kailangan natin yun. Kaya, lahat ng audit softwares um, assisted by computers, di ba? And then, we have embedded audit modules and then integrated test facility. So, ano yung integrated test facility naman? Yung integrated test facility, uh, nagpa-parallel test sila. So, merong actual procedure, may actual process, di ba? So, so, sulat ko dito. Merong actual process. Okay. Actual process. Ay, sorry. Yan. Actual process. And then, merong dummy process. Yung dummy process, ginawa lang nila yon Dummy process. Yung actual process, ito yung process talaga na totoo na nandoon sa operation. Kukuha sila ng sample process sa actual process. And then, magre-recreate sila using a dummy process. Iti-check nila kung yung lalabas sa actual process kapareho sa dummy process. Kung pareho yung lumabas, ibig sabihin, maganda yung internal control na ini-implement doon sa process ng operation. So, yun yung ginagawa. Ginagawa sa integrated test facility. Any question regarding uh, the overview of the audit tools between traditional and then automated? May question po ba? Can you still hear me? Yes, sir. All right. So let's move to the next slide. Uh, ang pinakaunang uh, audit tools na ginagamit ng mga auditors ay tinatawag na histograms. Yung histogram para siyang bar graph. Pero hindi talaga siya bar graphs. Kasi yung bar graphs, kung iba-iba uh, yun ng category. Uh, let's say, for example, ang bar graph, nirepresent niya yung sales sa ka-expenses. So, kinocompare niya yung sales sa ka-expenses. So, magkaiba yung category. Nakukuha po ba? So, from the bar graph presentation, makikita mo na, ah, malaki yung sales. Ah, maliit lang yung expenses. And then, di ba, may difference sila. Yung... yung uh, ikinahaba nung sales and then ikinaikli ng expenses, makikita mo na kung gaano kalaki yung net income nila using the bar graph. So, ganun yung bar graph. Unlike histograms, ang histograms naman, uh, it represents one category lang. Isa lang yung category, tapos, uh, chinecheck lang yung trend niya over time. So, yung tinatawag doon, interval. Nakukuha po ba? Nagigets po ba? Nagigets po ba ako, class? Yes po, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, one example ng histogram ay nakapresent dito sa ating PowerPoint, di ba? So, ano sabi? Histograms look like bar graphs but are actually not. Kasi kung malilito tayo, kung wala tayong idea between histograms and bar graph, makoconfuse tayo. Akala natin bar graph ito, but they are actually histograms. So, histograms are charts that show the frequency distribution of numerical data using rectangles, each of which represents intervals. So, let's say, for example, itong uh, letter A. This is a histogram for sales. So, this is a histogram for sales. So, sales trend siya ng isang company for, uh, for so many years. So, from first year papunta sa second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, noong operation ng company, yung sales may upward 
trend. Ibig sabihin, dumadami yung benta nila within five years. Nakukuha po ba? So kayo bilang auditor, masaya ba kayo o malungkot? Masaya. 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 Di ba kasi matataas yung sales. But after, after the fifth year, nung pang six year niya, bigla nang bumaba yung sales. Bigla nang bumaba yung sales. So, uh, kayo bilang auditor, uh, masaya ba kayo o malungkot kapag bumaba yung sales? Malungkot. 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 Right. Tama. That's correct. Malungkot. Pero bilang isang auditor, hindi lang kayo mag stick sa pagiging malungkot. Kailangan yung itanong, bakit bumababa yung sales? Diba? You have to ask them why. And you have to conduct a research, bakit bumababa yung sales? Diba? Kasi magre-report kayo sa uh, board of directors, sa, inter sa audit committee, bakit bumababa na yung sales? So, doon yung malalaman, bakit siya bumaba yung sales? Ay, kasi po, may bagong competitor. Nakuha niya yung market share natin. So, onti na lang yung market share natin. Napunta sa kanila yung ating market. So, that is, that is uh, a uh, one way bilang isang auditor para i-identify natin yung reason behind the downward trend using the histograms. Nakuha po ba? And then pangalawa, so try naman natin tong isa. Uh, the letter B. So yung letter B, uh, histogram siya, pero merong bimodal graph. Ibig sabihin, dalawa yung peak niya. Bakit kaya dalawa yung may mataas siya, tapos biglang bababa, tapos may mataas, may mababa. So, kung tayo bilang auditor, if this is sales also, tapos ganun ang trend. Ganun yung trend niya. Ano yung paliwanag nyo? Bakit pataas pa baba siya? Seasonal po. Seasonal Baka, lang yung kita si Eric. Seasonal. Tama. Yes, that's correct. Baka seasonal, baka cyclical lang yung sales. Diba? Tama yun. So, ang galing-galing nyo. Alam nyo sa sarili nyo na kapag ganyan yung trend, it could be seasonal or it could be a cyclical product or services. Nakukuha po ba? Nagigets po ba? So, sobra, sobrang galing nyo pala mga estudyante ko na ito. So, third uh, histogram. So, pababa naman daw. Nakikita natin pababa yung uh, Graph. Masaya, malungkot. Malungkot po. Malungkot. Malungkot na malungkot tayo. Kung yan yung sales, di ba? So, mag-worry ba tayo? Dapat ba natin hanapin yung reason? Bakit? Kailangan ba natin hanapin yung reason? Bakit? Yes, po. Yes, hanapin. Kasi kung hindi natin siya hanapin, oh, mawawala na tayo ng trabaho. Kasi palubog na, oh, mo, yung pinakadulo, onting-onti na lang, doon na siya sa linya. Ibig sabihin, magzi-zero na yung sales mo. So, ganyan yung nangyari kay Nokia. So, yung sales ni Nokia noon, dati nung uh, siya yung tinitingala ng lahat ng cellphone manufacturers, Kasi siya yung pinakamabenta. And then suddenly bilang bumagsak kasi hindi sila sumunod sa changing customers' needs. Ang gusto ng mga customers ngayon, yung touchscreen, di ba? Eh hindi sila sumunod. Akala nila, tatangkilikin pa din yung kanilang products na kipad-kipad, di ba? So until such time, bumaba yung sales nila at hindi na nila kinaya. Nakukuha po ba? And then, let's try naman itong isa. Letter E. Constant lang yung sales. Kung, uh, kung relax lang tayo na company, okay lang to sa atin. But if we want more bilang isang company, gusto natin maging kilalang company all over the world, 
hindi lang tayo magsisettle for this uh, trend. Gusto natin maganda yung ating sales uh, trend. Hindi lang siya pantay, hindi lang siya stagnant. Nakuha po ba? And then letter F, halo-halo yung may mataas, may mababa. So what does it mean? Ito yung letter F. Bakit ganyan yung ano, uh, histograms niya? We're just uh, talking about sales, histogram ng sales. Ano kaya yung reason? Bakit ganyan? Pwedeng gawa ng kwento. Do you have any idea? So one reason bakit ganyan is uh, possible na merong magandang competition. There could be a good or close competition. So very close yung competition, minsan kayo yung nananalo, minsan next year, the following year, yung kabila naman yung nanalo, nakuha na naman nila yung uh, puso, yung heart ng mga consumers. And then the following year, uh, mas maganda na naman yung product nyo, kaya mas marami yung sales ninyo. So ganun yung nangyayari kapag close yung competition. So... Very useful ang histogram para sa ating mga auditor kasi mas ma-identify natin kung ano yung reason nakikita natin through trends yung nangyayari about uh, particular uh, process, particular line item in the financial statement. So doon natin nakikita natin agad. Nakukuha po ba? Any question regarding histogram? Any question, class? I no. think uh, silence means none. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. The next uh, audit tools that we can use is the control chart. So, pag sinabing control chart, uh, these are charts that show the strengths and weaknesses of control. So, it shows strengths and weaknesses of control controls that is being set in place. So, kung mapapansin nyo, lahat ng mga square boxes dyan, doon sa graph, that represents uh, control points. Ito yung mga controls na nasa uh, process, within the process. Kung ang control point na yan is within the line, the center line, nakikita po ba yung center line sa gitna? That is what you call the control limit. Kapag nasa within the control limit, ibig sabihin, effective yung uh, internal control mo, yung iyong control procedures. But if it falls below the control limit, nasa baba siya. Makikita nyo siya dito, nandito siya sa ano, yung control point. Ibig sabihin, Yung control lim, uh, wala na siya sa control limit. Nasa lower control limit na siya. Baka hindi maganda yung control process na ini-implement nyo. Nakukuha po ba? And then kapag yung control limit naman is nasa taas, baka ideal yung control limit. Mukha siyang maganda. Pero sa sobrang ideal niya, baka naman na discourage na yung mga employees kasi sobrang higpit, sobrang higpit naman dito sa department namin. Uh, bawat kilos documented, uh, bawat alis, bawat labas documented. Nakukuha po ba? So, I have this experience nung kagagraduate ko lang nung college. Uh, Nakapag-work ako sa isang Japanese company. Can you, can you still hear me, class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Because uh, I think it's raining now, but uh, mahina lang naman. Pero, ayun. So, I have this exp working experience with a Japanese company. Dito rin siya sa Philippines, but the owner is a Japanese company and the operation is in Japan. Pero, pag lumabas kami, 
ano, nagsusuot kami ng GPS. Imaginein mo yon. Uh, pag pumasok kami sa work and when every time uh, we go out, we need to go outside. Kailan pupunta pag pupunta kami sa SSS, pag EB, PhilHealth, na meron kaming uh, sikasuhin uh, sa bank. May susuotin kaming GPS. Yung GPS nun para siyang itsurang um, yung yung ano, yung bala ng ng camera before, yung bilog, ganun siya. So, uh, that uh, will uh, help the company to trace kung saan kami nagpumupunta. So, ganun yung uh, setup noon sa dati kong pinasukan. So, napansin ko mataas yung employee turnover ng uh, company. Ibig sabihin, mabilis umalis yung mga tao. And one reason behind that, eh, pinapasuot kasi sila ng GPS kasi parang lumalabas, parang lahat na lang daw ng kilos nila binabantayan. So, kung mapapansin nyo, kung ganun, yung control na yon kung gagawa tayo ng control chart, nasa upper control limit yon And then, kailangan natin din i-address yun. Kasi, mapapansin nyo doon, ay bakit ano, bakit ang bilis umalis ng mga tao nyo dito na empleyado nyo. And one reason is, baka yung control na yon na ini-implement sa business processes. So, yun yung uh, purpose ng control chart. Actually, maganda yung uh, control chart kasi na-identify natin ano yung mga controls na may weaker points, ano naman yung mga controls na may mga strong points. Diba? Nakukuha niyo po ba? And then, yung mga nasa upper control limit, ito yung mga controls na may mga uh, good points or ideal points. Pero dapat i-assess pa rin natin kasi pinsan sa sobrang ideal ng control points na yun, baka hindi na siya maganda naman sa side ng employee. And then, yung mga nasa lower control limit, ito naman yung dapat natin i-address, baka kailangan i-improve. Nakukuha po ba? Nagigets po ba? Nagigets po ba, class? Apo, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. And then, yung control charts, maraming klase ng control charts. So, una dyan, we have what we call X-bar control chart. So, pag X-bar control chart, ano siya? Uh, lahat ng mga control points uh, na lumayo sa control limit. Let's say, for example, ito, yung dito sa baba. Lahat ng mga yan na nasa uh, baba, kailangan uh, i-identify yung reason why is it, uh, why it falls below the control limit. Bakit siya hindi okay? So, yun yung, ganun yung uh, kung paano mo i-address or i-analyze kapag X-bar control chart. And then, meron naman tayong tinatawag na range control chart. So, yung range control chart naman, yung differences between uh, two control points, meron silang, ang tinatawag doon is the range. So, we have to address as well bakit ang layo no, uh, range no dalawang control points. Bakit yung isa nasa upper control limit, yung isa it falls below the control limit. So, yun naman yung sa range control chart. And then sa standard deviation control chart naman, so dito, ito check natin yung deviation. And then attribute control charts naman, uh, we are just checking the attributes. So, ano yung mga example ng attributes uh, sa pag-implement ng control? So, one example is um, when we are looking for a sales invoice. Pag tumingin tayo sa sales invoice, ano yung mga nakikita natin? Price. Can you still hear me? Pag Ano po yung nakikita natin? Price, di ba? So, kapag nire-review natin yung sales invoice, may makikita tayong price. Dapat may makikita tayong price, di ba? Kapag meron, and then tama yung sales invoice, ano pa yung makikita natin? Dapat. 
quantity. Ano pa po yung makikita natin? Quantity, yes. Siyempre sa kailangan may quantity na naka-appear doon sa sales invoice. Kapag may naka-appear doon sa sales invoice na quantity, then ibig sabihin, okay yung sales invoice. Ano pa po ba? Ano pa yung mga alam nyo na nakikita natin sa sales invoice? Date. Dapat ba may date yung sales invoice? Yes. Yes, sir. Dapat po ba may date? Yes. May pangalan po ba ng customer? Dapat po ba may pangalan? Yes. Tsaka po description. Yes. Dapat po ba may address ng customer? Dapat may... Yes. So, di ba dapat yun, may, may address, may name ng customer, may date, may price, may unit price, may quantity, may total price, may tax, meron pang uh, item description. Nakukuha po ba? Ngayon, kung ganun yung mga required uh, fields na dapat ilagay doon sa uh, sales invoice, kailangan lahat ng invoice may ganun. Nakukuha po ba? Ngayon, kung walang, kung may isa na sales invoice na wala, kulang, then it falls below the control limit. So, ibig sabihin, hindi perfect yung internal control na in-implement sa pag-i-invoice ng sales invoice. Ako ka po ba? And then, we also have pass or not pass control chart. So, syempre, Sa control chart, uh, may identify tayong control points. So, let's say, for example, ito una, it passed the control uh, control limit. The second one, it passed the control limit. Third one, it passed the control limit. Fourth one, it passed the control limit. The fifth one, it does not pass the control limit because it falls below the control limit. Not passed. So, ganun lang yun. Yun yung pass and not pass control chart. Nakukuha po ba? And then, we also have constant and unconstant control chart. So, pag constant, kailangan uh, within the control limit. Kapag unconstant, it uh, either falls below or above the control limit. And then, we have pre-control charts. Pag sinabing pre-control charts, um, meron silang parang line na tinatawag. So let's say for example, dito, yung line dito, sa control limit na to, lahat ng nandito, kapalitan ko yung ano, color. Okay, yan. This color blue. So lahat ng ko, lahat ng control points na pumasok within this area ibig sabihin okay pa yung control points na yon. Pero kapag lumagpas sila within the blue color, pumunta sila dito sa yellow, yellow shaded na color, ibig sabihin ah uh, May warning. Okay pa yung control, pero may warning na. Ibig sabihin, pwedeng magkaroon ng problema. So, ganun yung sa pre-control chart. And then, last one, kapag sumobra na siya sa color yellow, kasi yung color blue, good, good control. Yellow, still good, but there is a warning. And then, napunta na siya sa color red. Color red na area. Ibig sabihin, hindi maganda yung control na naka-implement for that process. So, that is how uh, pre-control charts is being used pagdating sa assessment ng internal control. Any question regarding control charts? Class.
Any question? Can you still hear me, class? Yes. Yes, po. Okay, so uh, clear pa rin pa po ba no, na naririnig ako? O baka chop yes, up sir. Po ba ako? Okay, so we will now move to next slide. So okay lang po pala yung aking uh, um, bosses, hindi naman chop up. Yes po, okay po. Okay, so the next one is the Pareto chart. Narinig niyo na po ba yung Pareto chart? Do you have any idea what is Pareto chart or Pareto rule? No, sir. Ngayon ko pa lang, sir, narinig. Ay, okay, sorry. Okay, ngayon pa lang. Okay, yung Pareto chart or Pareto rule, ginagamit ko sa management. Um... Pag sinabing Pareto chart, syempre ang gumawa si Sir Pareto. And then, uh, the Pareto rule or Pareto chart, uh, yung standard niya is 80 to 20 rule. 80 to 20 rule. Kailangan daw nakafocus tayo sa 80% ng problem rather than the 20% of the problem. So, lahat ng problems that will compose of 80%, at least 80%, kailangan i-address natin properly. So, let's say, for example, let's say, for example, here in this, uh, um, what do you call this, this presentation, uh, product A. So, sa product A daw, si, um, bumababa daw yung sales. So, tayo bilang isang internal auditor, we have to identify bakit ba bumababa yung sales ng product A. So, we conduct a survey for the customer concerns. Kaya mapapansin niya, di ba, yung like for example, si Maggie after nung, ah, si, ano, si Nestle, after nung um, advertisements nila, nung ads nila or commercial, minsan nakasulat doon sa, ano, sa baba uh, for customer concerns, please call or please email or please, uh, uh, send us a message through Facebook. So, ganun. So, yung iba, ganun. Kasi, kailangan ma-identify nung, nung company ko, ano yung mga customer concerns. Ako ka po ba? So, after uh, taking a customer survey, na-identify natin kung ano yung mga concerns nila. Una, nakita natin, quality. May concern sila sa quality nung product A. Ibig sabihin niyo, binibenta natin product, hindi pala maganda masyado yung quality. So, yun yung concern nila. First one is the quality. Second one is the service. Baka daw kapag bumibili sila, pag bumibili sila, ay siya. Okay. Baka daw kapag bumibili sila, uh, hindi, uh, na, hindi daw approachable yung mga sales personnel hindi daw sila okay. Kapag bibili, hindi daw sila masyado pinapansin. So, yun yung another uh, concern ng mga customer. The third one is the price. So, hindi na maganda yung quality, hindi pa, hindi pa maganda service ng mga sales personnel nyo, sales agent nyo, tapos ang mahal-mahal pa. So, yun yung tatlo, first three na concern nila. Fourth one is the sustainability. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya nagtatagal. Using experience, ang hirap gamitin. After market parts, kapag nasira, um, ano yung mga parts, parang mahirap hagilapin, mahirap ayusin. Yung battery, kakaiba. So, like for example, kung cellphone, di ba? Kung yung cellphone, mahirap hanapin yung battery kapag naubos na yung 
uh, battery life cycle, hindi pwedeng palitan. So, ganun. So, yun yung concern nila aftermarket parts. And then, uh, last one is the design. Parang hindi daw nila gusto yung itsura. So, can you still hear me, class? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, from these concerns, applying the Pareto rule, kailangan i-identify daw natin kung ano yung uh, concerns that will make up at least 80% ng problem. So, first one, ano yung pinakamalaki daw? Quantity, di ba? So, using the Pareto rule, yung quantity daw is... 50% of the total concerns ni customer. Diba? So, yung total concerns ni customer, 50% of it is coming from the quality. Now, the second concern, services. Yung service pala, service. So, yung service plus the quality, it will add up to 70% of the total problem. And then, adding the concerns for price. So, it will add up, up to 80% of the total customer concerns. So, lumalabas, itong first three customer concerns represents 80% of the total customer's concerns. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung dapat nilang bigyan ng atensyon ng company. Nakukuha po ba? So, kayo bilang auditor na iparating nyo na sa company na ah, ito yung ano, ito yung 80% nung uh, total customer concerns. And then, yung remaining 20%, uh, bibigyan pa rin natin ng pansin, pero for later na lang. Kasi hindi naman siya yung major concern ng customer. Kasi itong 80% na to, lumalabas, ito yung makaka-apekto ng sales. Kung gaganda yung quality, gaganda yung service, gaganda yung uh, magiging competitive yung price, baka tumaas yung sales volume ng product A. Nakukuha po ba? Nagigets po ba class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Alright. So, medyo okay na po ba sa inyo kung ano yung pareto chart? Okay na po ba yung Pareto chart? Okay. So, Pareto chart is uh, more on root cause analysis. All right. Can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Can you still hear me, class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, let's move to the next slide. So, the third um, audit tools that uh, auditors are using is the fishbone diagram. So, pag sinabing fishbone diagram, para kasi siyang uh, tinik ng isda. Kaya tinawag siyang fishbone diagram. So, Kung mapapansin nyo dito sa, uh, sa presentation, meron tayong line sa gitna that represents the problem or the defect. And then meron tayo mga lines sa gilid. Diba? Parang katulad nung tinit ng isda. So this is what we call the fishbone diagram. So the line at the center is the problem or the defect that we are going to address. And then the uh, perpendicular lines at the top and at the bottom uh, represents the causes. Uh, what causes those problems? Uh, the problem na nandun sa gitna. Nakuha po ba? So, hahanapin natin saan ang gagaling yung problem. So, we have what you call, uh, we have for example, personnel. So, sa personnel, ano yung mga problema? Ano yung mga... Uh, nakaka-contribute doon sa problem, sa defect. So, una, nakita nila, training. Hindi daw properly trained yung personnel. Yung operators, hindi magagaling. Lagi nagkakamali. 
kaya lumalabas din na product, may defect. Diba? Yung shift, shifting ng mga personnel, uh, dapat tatlo yung shift kasi 24 hours, pero dinadalawa lang yung shift, and then napapagod din yung mga tao. Uh, inaantok, di ba? So, imbis na maluto na maayos yung isang product na nasusunog. So, ganun. Nakukuha po ba? Materials. So, iti-check din natin kung ano yung meron sa materials. Lubricants, kulang ng lubricants. Kaya pag dumaan doon sa makina, dumidikit siya doon sa loob ng machine. Nasisira. Imbis na uh, maging okay, maging smooth. Di ba? Suppliers. Ang suppliers na meron tayo, sabihin natin, uh, dahil may pandemic, nagsarado. So, wala na tayong ibang supplier. Kulang yung na isusupply. Kuha po ba? So, ganun lang yun. And then, machines. So, sa machine, uh, yung speed medyo mabagal. Diba? Minsan, sobra sa speed. Yung mga pangkat, yung bladeware, kung halba na, sabihin natin, libro. Kung libro yung minamanufacture, ah, uh, check natin yung machine, yung blades ng machine, ng panghiwa, hindi na maganda, hindi na matalas. Kaya kapag hiniwa yung libro, imbis na pantay-pantay ang pagkahiwa, bungi-bungi yung libro. Para siyang ano, ang tawag doon, para siyang dictionary, yung may mga bungi sa gilid, di ba? Pero hindi naman siya dictionary yung libro na yon yung ginawa. Para normal na textbook lang siya. So, these are the problems that we can address using the fishbone diagram. Parang dinadaisek natin kung ano yung mga cause no uh, errors, ng mistakes, ng defect. So, fishbone diagram uh, is also a root cause analysis tool natin. Do you have any question regarding fishbone diagram? Do you have any question, class? None, sir. None, sir. None. Okay. All right. So, uh, before we go on to the next slide, so fishbone diagram, also known as cause and effect diagram or Ishikawa diagram, it is a great tool of identifying the root cause of an issue. So, the next slide, for the next slide, oh, we have what we call the force field analysis. So, the force field analysis is a useful tool to resolve conflicting opinions, comparing pros and cons, and to evaluate the strength and weaknesses of a product or project. So, maganda rin itong force field analysis na to kasi chine-check natin kung ano yung mga strengths and weaknesses ng particular process. So, let's say for example, yung isang company may plano siyang mag-upgrade na bagong uh, machinery, uh, manufacturing machinery. So may plano yung company mag-upgrade ng manufacturing machinery. Kaso, may naririnig sa ibang side ng management, okay sila. O sige, bumili tayo ng bagong machinery. Pero namang ibang members ng management ay wag na okay pa yung machine na meron tayo. So, uh, with those two conflicting opinions, mahihirapan makapag-decide ano nga ba yung gagawin. Uh, bibili ng machine, ng bagong machine, o hindi na muna bibili ng bagong machine. So, with that, with that, uh, can you still hear me, class? Just checking if you still can hear me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, okay. So uh, let's go again. This is a force field analysis. 
So, may dalawang conflicting opinions. So, may pro, merong anti doon sa pag-upgrade ng new manufacturing machinery. But before they decide, they applied the force field analysis. So, ano yung meron sa force field analysis? We have to identify ano yung mga factors, bakit nila consider yung pag-upgrade pag ng new machinery, ano rin naman yung mga factor, bakit hindi consider ng iba yung pag-upgrade ng new machinery. So, doon, nalaman nila, okay, in-identify nila yung uh, mga factor, bakit yung iba nag-decide, gusto ko ng, gusto namin ng bagong manufacturing machinery. So, una nakita nila, uh, customers want new products. So, gusto daw ng customers ng new product. So, with the new manufacturing machinery, baka makapag-produce ng bagong product. Diba? Ikalawa, may improved speed sa production. So, tama naman kasi kapag may bago kang machinery, mas mabilis yung pag-produce na products ng units. Diba? Ikatlo, Hello, class. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, okay. Uh, Saan tayo na hinto? Tuloy-tuloy lang yung uh, sab salita ko. Hindi ko yata na na-check kung saan tayo. So, sa force field tayo, no? Yes, sir. Okay. So, sa force field, ulitin ko lang yung sa force field. Sa force field analysis, it should check natin yung forces na parang kampi doon sa particular plan or particular process and then meron namang forces na hindi naman kampi. Let's say for example, ito may plan to upgrade factory with new manufacturing machinery. Mag-upgrade daw ng factory through acquisition of new manufacturing machinery. So, meron mga kampi, may mga okay, meron namang mga hindi. So, yung mga kampi, kailangan alamin natin kung ano yung uh, dahilan. Bakit sila okay sa pag-upgrade ng factory. Sabi nila, uh, yung ibang customer kasi gusto ng bagong product. So, kapag may bagong machinery, baka okay, baka makapag-produce tayo ng bagong products. And then, ikalawa, uh, kapag may bagong machinery, mas mabilis yung production. 
And then ikatlo, kapag may bagong machinery, mas marami yung mapaproduce. And then ikaapat, kapag may bagong machinery, onti lang yung cost. Unlike doon sa, sa old machinery, mas mataas yung maintenance cost. And then, so na-identify na natin yung mga, ano, mga reasons, yung mga kampe. Yung mga reasons naman na hindi kampe, ano yung dahilan nila? Loss of overtime. Stop overtime. Sabi nila, kapag may bagong machinery, uh, mas mabilis na yung production, edi yung mga tao hindi na mag-overtime. Malulungkot sila. Onti na lang yung dagdag na pera nila. Maliit na nga lang pa sweldo natin. Wala pa silang overtime. So yun yung ano nila, reason nila. Ikalawa, staff frightened of new technology. Since bago yung technology, bago yung machine, eh, takot yung mga tao gamitin yun. Baka hindi nila alam. Ikatlo, environmental impact ng new technology. Baka kasi, uh, hindi pa yun, pag may bagong technology, baka hindi compliance with the existing environmental laws. Baka, baka magkaroon ng problema. So, yung iniisip nila. Ikatlo, ay ikaapat, cost. Kung bibili tayo ng bagong machinery, magasas yan. Kasi bibili tayo sa one-time purchase, one-time big purchase. Diba? Unlike yung maintenance cost, tuloy-tuloy uh, nga yung maintenance cost, pero paunti-unti lang. Diba? Kasi sa kabila, sabi nila, kapag bumili ka ng bagong machinery, yung maintenance cost mo, wala na or baka mababa lang. Unlike kapag niretain mo yung old manufacturing machinery, may maintenance cost ka. Mahal yun in the long, in the long run. And then, uh, last one, you know, reason ng mga against, disruption. Siyempre kapag may bagong machinery, hindi pa alam kung paano gamitin, kung, uh, kung paano siya gamitin ng maayos. E de, magkakaroon ng hamper sa production, disruption sa production. Hindi makakaproduce ng maayos. Nakuha po ba? So, na-identify na natin kung ano yung mga forces na kampe, pro for that plan, and then forces that go against the plan to upgrade. Ngayon, i-identify natin kung gano'ng kabigat naman yung uh, mga factors na ito. Kung gano'ng kabigat siya. So, from the forces for change, yung total daw is 10. And then for the forces against change, total daw is 11. So, ibig sabihin, kanina yung mas malaki, yung pro or yung anti. Can you still hear me, class? Yes, sir. Nawala po ba ako or nakikita niyo pa rin yung pinepresent ko? Nakikita pa rin po, sir. Nakikita pa din po, sir. Okay. So, the question here is, uh, based doon sa diagram, sa force field analysis, uh, yung weight, no, yung bigat ng forces that uh, is uh, nakampe doon sa, ano, sa plan to upgrade, 10 lang yung score. And then yung sa ayaw, 11 yung score. So ano yung decision? Uh, Mag-upgrade uh, mag po ba ng machinery or hindi? Hindi. Hindi. Hindi, sir. Hindi. Siya. So, based sa data, based sa data na meron tayo, hindi daw mag-upgrade ng manufacturing machinery. Kasi mas mataas yung uh, weight ng forces against change. So, this is how force field analysis works. So, mas maganda ito. So, kapag kayo mga magkakaibigan, friends, classmates, o meron kayong conflict, conflicting uh, views and opinions, o try nyo i-apply yung force field analysis. So, 
with that, merong process. So, mas maganda rin to kapag, ano, kapag naging auditor kayo or CPA na. So, you can apply force field analysis when you're conducting an internal control uh, assessment. So, let's try to go to the next slide. Um, another audit tool is what we call flowchart. So, yung flowchart, alam nyo naman na to, yung flowchart, di ba, pinapagamit ito, pinapatry ito sa inyo ni Ma'am Macrina, di ba? Or ng ibang professors ninyo? Yes, sir. Yes. So, flowchart kasi, it is a diagram that represents workflow of process. So, lumalabas, yung flowchart, it gives you visualization of how the documents flow. ba? So, ito yung, for example, this is the document, it flows through this way. It flows through this way. So, ganito yung uh, pag-flow no, production. And then, there are diamonds. These are uh, decisions. Lahat ng mga diamonds na nakikita niyo dyan, decisions yan. So, i-stop muna kayo dyan, and then you have to decide uh, yes or no. Kapag yes, tutuloy ka sa isang process. No, babalik ka ulit or may isa ka na namang process na susundin. So, this is how flowcharts uh, uh, is flowchart is very useful tool in uh, conducting an internal audit kasi ma, na, na visualize natin kung paano yung takbo ng process. So, tinatawag nila ito minsan na, ano, na workflow or process flow, yung iba naman na concept map, yung iba mind map. So, this is how a flowchart uh, can be used uh, as a helpful tool in internal audit. So, next uh, eight areas of waste. So, yung eight areas of waste, na-discuss to sa chapter 6, na-discuss din siya sa chapter 7. Pero i-discuss ko na siya as one time. So, para ma-discuss na natin pareho yung chapter 6 sa chapter 7. So, dati kasi yung mga manufacturers, mga companies, syempre, noon ng industrial revolution, nagpaproduce sila ng mga products that has um, waste. So, para makagawa ng isang product noon, may lalabas na related waste. So, syempre, noon hindi pa siya masyadong uh, binibigyan ng pansin kasi um, hindi pa masyadong madumi yung earth. Pero ngayon kasi, uh, kailangan natin panatilihin malinis yung Earth dahil ito lang naman yung ano, living planet kung saan tayo pwedeng mabuhay. Wala naman tayo nakitang ibang living planet na may tao. So, kailangan i-maintain natin ito. So, doon nagkaroon ng idea how to reduce waste. So, una, uh, there are eight areas of waste. So, una, are there any defects? May defect po ba? Kung may napoproduce na defects, ano yung reason? Bakit nagkakaroon ng defect? Baka hindi na meet yung uh, production uh, requirements. Bakit nagkaroon ng defect? Baka hindi maganda yung uh, process sa production. Kaya laging merong defect. ba? So, kailangan mag-focus din tayo dito kung tayo yung internal auditor o kaya tayo yung nasa production team. Kasi syempre, uh, if we will reduce defects, it will also reduce the waste. Kapag na-reduce yung waste, tataas yung profitability, bababa yung cost, bababa yung waste. Diba? Ikalawa, overproduction. Sometimes, uh, it is good to produce more, but uh, there, but both of the cases, overproduction results to uh, a wasted product. Particularly kapag perishable yung goods. Diba? Nag-produce ka ng maraming maraming gatas. 
ba? Diba? Yung, for example, isang company, nag-produce siya ng maraming maraming gatas, yun yung kanyang main product, but eventually, hindi naman na-consume lahat ng customers. So, na, yung na-produce nilang batch ng mga gatas, nasa stocks lang, nasa shelves lang na mga supermarkets until such time na na-expire na sila. So, dahil sa overproduction, nagkaroon tuloy ng waste. No? So, in-expect kasi nila maibibenta agad, tataas yung sales, pero dahil hindi naman na-consume lahat, naging waste. So, from sales, naging siyang waste na lang. So, we have to look as well if there are overproduction. Ikatlo is waiting. Siyempre, waiting time. Waiting for the next process step to occur. So, do you have idea? Do you have any idea regarding bottleneck in production? May bottleneck in production na na pag-aralan yun na po ba yung bottleneck in production? Can you still hear me? Yung kapag madami po masyadong product, sistak na lang po siya sa production po at po flow outwards. Kaya natakaw po ng bag. Yes, that's correct. So, bottleneck. So, mag-ano ka? Mag-drawing ako ha. Bottleneck production. Alam niyo itsura ng bote, di ba? Alam niyo itsura ng bote? Bottle. So, drawing ako ng bottle sa kahiga. Drawing ko ng bottle na kahiga, ah. Ito yung bote, kasi ito yung neck, no? Bottle, di ba? So, yung bottleneck, ito yung tinatawag na bottleneck, di ba? Uh, Dine-describe natin yung production as a bottleneck, na may bottleneck, kasi initially, nakakapag-produce yung first department na uh, 100,000 units ng... Uh, and, ng product. So, nakakapag-produce kapag-produce originally ng 100,000 units ng product. Pero, pagdating sa second department, yung 100,000 na napoproduce, 20,000 lang yung kaya nilang i-process for the next department. So, nagkakaroon ng bottleneck in the production. So, kasi dito, 100,000 yung na-produce, pero pag, isinun, pag ipinasok na sa second department, ang kaya lang nila i-process, 20,000. So, merong 80,000 na nakahintay lang, nakaabang. Diba? E kaso, paano kung produce ng produce ng 100,000 yung first department and then 20,000 lang palagi yung na O, na pa-process ng next department, matatambakan yung next department ng mga units. And then may possibility pang masira yung mga units na yun kasi nakatambak lang. So that is what you call the bottleneck in the production. So ito yung may bottleneck in the production. Nagigets po ba? Yes, po. Okay, so let me erase this again kasi ang na. Okay, okay, yeah, that one. And then, so we're now done with the defect. We're, we're now done with the defect. We're now done with overproduction, waiting. Next one is the unused talent. So pag unused talent daw, uh, may mga uh, tao, tayo, na hindi natin fully na utilize yung kanilang talents, skills, and knowledge. Ibig sabihin, may hinire tayo, hindi naman talaga natin nagagamit. So with that, uh, syempre, we have to identify those uh, employees na performing saka employees na non-performing. Syempre, kung non-performing yung employees, kung ikaw yung may-ari ng company, i-retain mo ba o hindi na? Can you still hear me? Can 
Can you still hear me, class? Yes. All right. Okay. So, syempre yung mga um, employees na hindi naman talaga natin nagagamit, maybe uh, it is now time to let them go, di ba? Alisin na natin because it will reduce cost dahil hindi naman natin sila na utilize And then, uh, fifth one is the transportation, the cost of transportation. Siyempre, uh, minsan may natapos na natin yung finished product, pero may sasubmit ba natin, may deliver ba natin on time sa mga customers, may paparating ba natin sa right place at the right time, di ba? So, kung, kung hindi may paparating sa tamang oras yung mga goods or services, there will be a wasted time. Uh, wasted time uh, is equivalent to a wasted uh, revenue. Kasi supposedly dapat revenue na yun at that time. And then magdi-deliver na sana ulit ng bago. Eh kaso ang bagal ng transportation natin for, uh, for delivering on the goods and services, eh then nagkaroon ng opportunity loss. So yun yung uh, dapat natin tingnan sa eight areas of waste. Uh, and then... Six one the excessive inventory. Sempre nakapag produce tayo may overproduction, nagawa lahat naging finished goods. Eh kaso hindi naman na ilalabas lahat, so meron tayo excessive inventory. So kapag may excessive inventory, baka may possibility ma masira na lang siya, ma, ma expire sa warehouse. Or kung marami man tayong raw materials naman siya, not uh, finished goods, uh, hindi lahat pala napaprocess. May excessive uh, mate raw materials tayo. Six, uh, seventh, the motion. Wasted time and effort related to unnecessary movements by, our, uh, by the people uh, working for a particular operations department or uh, team Siyempre, kailangan ma-utilize din natin lahat no movement no tao. Minsan kasi may mga tao, may mga employees na lax lang, may iba na workaholic. So, yung mga lax, medyo relax. E di, hindi na natin, um, maybe it's time to reconsider uh, their um, employment with the company. So, and this is a sad reality kasi... Tayo, syempre, tao rin tayo. We want people to be happy. We want them to have work. Kasi tayo, gusto rin natin may work tayo in the future. Pero, we are on the part na we are uh, considering the overall benefit of the company. So, we have to sacrifice others. Like, uh, kung excessive yung tao, maybe we have to to remove other people. Uh, employees para makasustain, para makapagtuloy lang yung uh, business. Kasi kung i-retain din natin yung ibang employees, hindi naman na talaga kailangan, baka mag-collapse yung business. So, that is one way na very challenging sa part ng management. Kasi in the future, kayo magiging din kayong part ng management kasi accountants kayo, magiging kayong CPAs. And then, uh, you will uh, come to such a point now you have to decide between what is good and uh, what is uh, what is right diba iba kasi yun eh you're maybe you're doing good maybe you're doing right but not all uh, right could be good and not all good or always right so you have to decide kung ano yung makakabuti sa kung ano yung tama so yun lang and the last one, extra processing. Siyempre, minsan sa production, uh, there are certain points sa pag-process uh, ng product kung saan ay kailangan pa pala ng extra processing for this. Siyempre, we have to address that. Bakit kailangan nyo pa i-process extra, anong uh, extra time yung finished goods? Doon mo malalaman yung reason ay kasi po yung first department, imbis na gawin nila ito, hindi nila ginagawa, kaya kami na lang gumagawa. So, that is the extra processing. So, these are the eight areas of waste. Kapag na-address natin properly lahat ito, 
magkakaroon tayo ng waste reduction. Waste reduction results to increased profitability, utilization of limited resources, reduction of cost, and then reduction of wasted resources. Any question regarding areas of waste? If none, maybe we can move to the next slide. So next one is the scatter diagram. So yung scatter diagram, feeling ko alam nyo na to, wala ba kayong statistics uh, nung first year college? Meron sir, pero puro basics. Ano. Wala po ba? Yung senior high lang uh, po. So. Oh, meron. Okay. So, sa scatter diagram, actually, anong senior high? Okay. So, okay. So, ulitin ulit na ito, scatter diagram. Yung scatter diagram, actually, this is a linear progression. So, linear lang yan. Linear mathematics. However, hindi tayo naka-focus sa linear progression sa scatter diagram. Ang tinitingnan natin, yung individual, uh, uh, ano to? Individual uh, effects, individual uh, focal points, kung saan nagkakaroon ng cluster. So, we are focusing on the cluster of concerns here. So, mostly, kung saan nagkakaroon ng cluster, yun yung dapat natin i-analyze. Bakit dito nagkukumpul-kumpul yung data, yung information? Diba? So, let's say for this example, about sa price ng apartments. Diba? Sales price ng mga apartments. So, parang lumalabas ito yung rent, monthly rent ng mga apartments. So, Normally daw, ang mga price ng apartments nag-range from 0 up to 300 uh, dollars. Sabihin natin, 0 up to 300 dollars. Kasi dyan nagkakaroon ng cluster ng mga uh, information dito sa area na to. And then yung... A uh, ground living area lang na ano na applicable doon is from zero square meter up to 2,500 square meter. So malamang based sa information natin, ang mabenta, uh, ang laging tinatangkilik, inuupahan ay yung mga uh, ground living area with with uh, up to 2,500 square meters, and then yung offered monthly rent lang is from zero dollar up to 300 dollars. So, kung kayo yung business, kapag nagpapaupa kayo ng 3,000 square meters up to 5,000 square meters or more, tapos ang offered uh, selling price nyo or monthly rent nyo is ranging from $400 up and above, hindi nyo mape-penetrate yung market. Kasi yung market, nagka-cluster siya within this area. Nakukuha po ba? Nagigets po ba, class? Nagigets po ba yung scatter diagram? Yes, sir. All right, sige. thank you. So, scatter diagram, it is a visual tool for analyzing pairs of numerical data and showing the relationship between two variables. So, in our case, the sales price and then the ground living area. Scatter diagram is also known as scatter plot or XY graph. So let's move to the next slide. The 5S or lean methodology. The 5S or lean methodology, uh, this came from uh, Japan. So sa Japan to nag originate and uh, this is actually uh, five Japanese words. So the first one is uh, Satan. The Satan, also known as straighten or set in order. 
So this is the first principle in the lean methodology kung saan uh, ma-achieve natin yung magandang process by applying the 5S. So sabi daw una, sit on or straighten or set in order. Kailangan daw everything must be set in order para daw ma-process natin, ma 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 maayos natin yung process. So that is uh, uh, setting it in order or straighten the process. Kung merong baliko, we have to straighten the process. So it's just an idiomatic expression na kung merong baliko, kung kapag sinabi merong deviation, we have to straighten, we have to make it uh, not deviating. Second one is siri. So pag sinabi ng siri, sort. So na straighten na natin, na ayos na natin yung process, but we have to sort yung process, di ba? Um, we have to check kung ano yung uh, meron doon sa process. Meron bang dapat ito yung nauna, dapat ito yung sumunod, ito yung dapat yung nasa huli. So you will be the one to sort out uh, the flows within the process. Third one is say so. So ito yung pangatlo sa 5S natin, which is shine or sweet. So, na, na set na natin siya in order, na ayos na, ikalawa, na sort na, ikatlo, dapat uh, i-polish pa natin, make it shine, uh, sweep uh, the unnecessary uh, processes, yung hindi, hindi naman kailangan doon sa process. So, we have to remove it. And then fourth one is Siketsu. So Siketsu means systematize or standardize. So okay na tayo, di ba? Sa una, we, we set it in order na ayos na yung mga dapat na ayos. Ikalawa, we have to sort ano ba yung tamang uh, steps or procedures na sa process flow. Ikatlo, dahil na ayos mo na, we, you have to remove those unnecessary in the process and then ika, ika apat you have to we have to systematize or standardize the process na naayos na natin and then ika lima sustain or shitsuke so uh, we have to sustain uh, those uh, process na naayos mo from the first 4s so, ito yung first 4S. Kapag na-okay na to, the fifth one is to sustain. Kailangan mapanatili mo yung process na yun. So, this is the 5S lean methodology. Yung ngayon, ini-implement pa ito. Ang tawag nila ngayon dito is a lean six sigma process. So, ina-apply nila itong 5S doon sa lean six sigma. And uh, you know what? If you got certification uh, from Lean Six Sigma that kung maging yellow belt ka, green belter or black belter for Lean Six Sigma, normally yung salary range mo uh, will be uh, starting from 50,000 pesos up to 100,000 pesos. So kung dito ka sa Pilipinas, mga ganun yung price mo the uh, no, the best uh, price you can have uh, best salary you can have here is uh, 200,000 pesos so mga ganun yung maximum mo so malaki yung value nito kasi ito yung nakaka-improve na process so 5s lean methodology do you have any question regarding 5s class do you have any question regarding 5s Answer. All right. So let uh, let's move to the next slide. Other auditing tools. So all right. So sa other auditing tools, we have what we call the RASI diagram. So RASI diagram uh, came from the word. Uh, uh, from its word RASI, first one is R, responsible, diba? R, responsible. 
we have to identify who is the key responsible for that process. So that is the first one, RASI, of the RASI. Responsible. Sino ba yung responsible for the process flow? Ikalawa, who is accountable? I'm sorry. Okay. Who is accountable? And then, third one is, sino yung dapat Iko consult kapag, kapag mayroong problema sa process. So, na-identify na natin sino yung responsible for this process. Sino yung responsible for another process. So, na-identify na natin kung sino yung tao na yun. Ngayon, we have to identify sino yung accountable. Diba? For his responsibility. Kasi dapat siya na-check nyo yun. Diba? And then, third one, Kapag nagkaroon ng problema, sino yung dapat nating takbuhan? Sino yung dapat nating konsultahan? Bigyan ng uh, hinga ng consultation. So, yun yung letter C, sarasi. And then last one, kapag may problema, sino yung dapat i-inform? Sino yung dapat i-inform? So, that is... The RASI. So we're now done with RASI. Next, other auditing tools, communication plan, and then communication matrix. So yung communication plan actually, uh, it focuses on the uh, process flow ng communication. Well, in communication matrix, it gives us the overall uh, overview kung paano ba uh, gumagana yung communication within the company. And then, uh, fourth one is the input process output map. Ito mapag-aaralan nyo to sa uh, information technology nyo or infotech nyo. So, pag-aaralan nyo yan, yung input process and then output. In every input, kapag prinasis mo, merong output. And then, sino yung mga suppliers ng input data? And then, sino naman yung consumers ng output data? Uh, letter E, mistake proofing. So, ito, it focuses on mistake. Uh, kung may nakita mistake, uh, how to correct it. Then, uh, letter F, benchmarking. So, ito, mapag-aralan nyo rito sa auditing theory, yung benchmarking techniques. Uh, uh, you have uh, this particular loss kung saan eto lang yung absorbable loss kapag lumagpas na diyan we have to check bucket nag uh, bucket nagkaroon ng excessive loss uh, sino yung accountable for the excessive loss so benchmarking tinatawag doon and then letter g the five whys uh, so tayo bilang auditor hindi lang tayo na, nasa satisfy sa unang why meron tayong series of whys di ba kapag may pag may tinanong kayo you have to ask them why? Kapag nasagot nila, you have to ask them an, again, another why. So, hindi kayo convinced with their answer. Why? Why? Third why? Fourth why? And then, you come to the point that you will ask them for the fifth why. And then, doon lang kayo masasatisfy. Minsan nga, hindi pa rin kayo masasatisfy. So, yun yung kayo bilang internal auditor. Medyo meticulous tayo kapag tayo yung Nagtatanong. And then last one, work breakdown structure. So, uh, chine-check natin kung ano yung uh, breakdown or details no um, work structure within the company. Baka merong non-performing, baka merong overlapping uh, positions, overlapping tasks, na baka pa pwedeng iisa lang yung pwedeng mag-work for that. So, that's why we need to check the work breakdown structure in each of the company. So, to further reduce cost. So, these are all of the auditing tools that we can use uh, while conducting an audit. So, any questions, class, regarding auditing tools?
Any questions, class, regarding auditing tools? <laughs> Any questions? Can you still hear me, class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. So are there any other questions regarding the tools uh, used in uh, audit? Wala na po bang questions, class? None po. None. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, I, we can now dismiss our class. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, see you again next meeting so we can discuss for the, the other chapters. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Happy, happy weekend. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you